just about to invite me as a about about to invite the real Osho as a collaborator. I'm done fucking. I did it yet, <laughs> dude. I did it like a couple days ago. I spent like 30 minutes on my phone editing this thing, like doing all out was on mine, you know. So I had to redo it for the real Osho. But here we are again, part three with Tit, bro. We. Tip might just be the podcast. Tip might be the podcast. It's not even. It's not even the real O show, bro. It's cards from the basement podcast here. You know, I like playing that. I like playing that second fiddle, though. You know, I like being the the guy you can dish it off to at any time. That Ray Allen esque. <laughs> I'm just. I'm, I'm a point forward. Point forward, baby. Like- Yo, what up, everybody? Real O show podcast. Deja vu. We got Tip back on. Running you know, it back. We, we want him to be part of you, you, this podcast as much as possible. We obviously love Tip. Great personality. You know, Gary V said, podcast with three people, that's the wave. Three. So here we are. Three. Here we are. And we got multiple camera angles. Joshua, you know, if you guys watched this last week, so this is going to come out a week later. What, what even is the date today? July 1st. July 1st. New so this month. is going to come out a week from now. You know, Joshua, what he's doing with the editing is incredible. So thank you to Joshua for coming up with that idea, honestly. But here we go. A lot of sports talk to get into. NBA free agency just started, and it is nuts. Absolutely insanity. So, so I, I do want to, because I do like keeping it with the Detroit sports. Yes. So, so let's jump into Miles Bridges really quick. So we Miles talked about Bridges, him last yeah. week. He obviously came out with... A domestic violence. Yikes. Obviously, obviously Yikes. that is very, very serious. Very serious. Very serious so, stuff. So, you know. I mean, this guy was I looking mean, at a max contract, and now he might be looking at a max sentence, you know. So, uh, a complete uh, 360, <laughs> 720. Uh, now he's in the upside down, Miles Bridges, dog. Like, Yeah, um, so, hey, you know, that was a great way to put it. So, we're going to leave it at that. But, hey, tomorrow, July 2nd. We're going to see, so this is my first rap concert we're going to. Ever. Ever. In entirety of his life. So we're going to see Lil Durk, Rod Wave, well, Independent Summer it's Slam. actually The Voice. The Voice. Wave. My, my apologies. So hey. Let, Independent I think, Summer Slam weekend, LCA. 100%. I think we should all go around the room and just, man, what, what are we excited to see about tomorrow with Rod Wave and The Voice? Obviously, there's some other acts, but let's get into that. You want to go first, Tim? I will go first. Uh, I'm excited to see Rod Wave uh, just perform live. For sure. Um, Got to put my boy Zachary on here for, for showing me Rod Wave way back in the day. And Rod Wave has easily Excellent. become a top three artist for me. So I'm very excited to, to see him live and to uh, just get that whole experience. Oh, the chef. Let's do it. Uh, I'm excited because I haven't been to a live show in probably three, four years. So I'm, I'm excited to go to a live show. Definitely excited to see Rod Wave. Definitely excited to see Smirk. I'm, uh, sure. and I'm, I, I'm excited. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get in the sauce tomorrow. I haven't drank in a minute. I'm gonna have a good time. It's gonna I be a great know, time. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Um, I, I think my biggest thing is whether I cry or not, bro. I, I hope I cry some real tears. Hey. I also hope we get it on camera. Honestly, the Rod Wave is my guy. Obviously, I think Drake is is the best, but like a selfish favorite of mine is 100% Rod Wave. I love that type of music. I like the singing. I like the floating in and out between rapping and singing with the trap beat. So obviously, I'm really excited to see Lil to see Rod Wave. Also, Lil Durk, who has absolutely just came on this year. Who you guys know? I think he's album of the year. Should probably be artist of the year. Like he's he's running 2022, 2016. I was telling you guys to listen to Lil Durk. Uh, Everyone looked at me on, like I was crazy. You were? I, mean, I don't want to. I just don't want to say it. But you know, shout out to Nav because he put it on to me. He. I was watching an interview of Nav and he said his favorite artist was Lil Durk. I started <laughs> fucking a little bit, but Durk's had some bars for a while. Hundred percent he has. Hundred percent he has. But the thing with Lil Durk is like you say about all artists it takes time to find that sound and to find what works and he's just in that zone where it's just everything he touches legend shit for sure so obviously we're excited to see that let's get into this crazy nba free agency i 
I don't even know what to do. Kyrie, KD, they don't want to play with each other. <laughs> they, want, they both want out of Brooklyn. Kyrie's trying to force his way back to play with LeBron because he misses LeBron. So I think we should start there with Kyrie trying to force his way back to LeBron, which I love to see. Kyrie's grown up now, and he understands how hard it is to be is, is the Kyrie, guy. Is Kyrie grown up now? I mean, I don't know if uh, I, think I don't know if Kyrie is grown up. Um, I, you you want to know why I think he's grown up? For him to be able to voice the fact we talked about be able to voice things earlier, right? That's you remember? True. That's very, yeah, I, do, I do remember that. I do remember that. And for him to be able to voice that, wow, maybe I shouldn't have left LeBron. I was young. I wanted to be the guy, but when you're the guy. A lot it's of things hard. come along with that. Because when you harder. win and lose, it's on you. When you don't win championships, it's on you. You know, and do I think Kyrie can be the guy for a team? 100%. 100%. His talent's there. Yeah. But having a guy like LeBron to supplement how good he is as a player is, like, the perfect thing. I think, for me, it just simply comes down to the fact that Clay Thompson and Steph Curry played more games together this year, 45 then KD and Kyrie played in three years together, 42. I thought so, it was 44. 44, yes. 44. So it was 44. 44 because we saw the stat, which was which is nuts. Mind-blowing. Which so, is nuts. And, and we also talked about it with Kyrie and KD. Maybe, listen, hindsight's twenty twenty. but when it first happened, I was always like, man, I don't know if that's going to work because you have two superstars. Mm-hmm. Who are very in their feelings, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong of, with that. A lot of Twitter fingers on that team, for sure. And there's nothing wrong with being in your feelings. I think it's I think it's crucial. But you have KD, who probably was mad at Kyrie for not getting the vaccine and not playing those games, not and being that, there, and not being there, and then getting into the playoffs and they're finally playing together. And they both they both were, choked. We're both were kind of hit or miss. So they both have blame there. But where, bro? Where's KD going? Where's KD going? Uh, supposedly he wants to go to Phoenix. That's out of left field. I, I have no idea. I have no idea where KD's going. I have no to idea Detroit? where Kyrie's going. To Detroit? I mean, you know what I would love to see, honestly? I know, I know a team. There's a lot of people. They know a team. We know a team that has a lot of picks, a lot of young talent that they could move. You know, they got the cap space. Bro, we'll give them everybody o- but Cade. Oklahoma City Thunder. Bring Kevin Durant home. Well, we did talk about that. I would, give up I would love Chet, to see that. Give up a bunch of future first round picks. I would love to see that as KD an home, fan. play with Shea, play with Josh Giddy, play with Lou Dort. If, listen, the respect. Not KD. a fan. Not a fan of that move. If, if I was KD and they sent me back to OKC, I'd retire. I fuck Oklahoma City. You couldn't pay me enough money Man, in the world to live there. What you wake up with your hate towards Oklahoma City? I've been, there. I've, I've, been there. I've 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 been there. Never been to Oklahoma City. Don't know. First hand account right here. No, I'll tell you why we hate. I hate Oklahoma City. Just to be a sidebar to get away from this for one second. We, when I lived in Texas, we used to have to drive two hours basically because there's only we were in between Dallas and Oklahoma City. So you either had to go to Dallas, or OKC, and of course. Ice way cheaper in Oklahoma City, so we were we were fucking lugging there, dude. Like right next to a dog factory, like they make dog food. Just you walk outside, like want to throw up, dude. It's disgusting. I hate sunny dude. OKC, bro. It, that place was just ratchet, dude. Oh yeah. So um, I don't think I'd like to go to OKC either. I mean, I wouldn't either. But hey, if the checks cash, what KD would be getting? You know, I would just I just don't think see, twice. Maybe I just don't see any way. Like, how does he end up on Phoenix? Like, how does he end up on like the Miami Heat? Like, none of this just makes any sense. Especially like the day after Kyrie opts back into his deal. So what is the effect? So what is the thing with Kyrie opting back into his deal, but then he wants to go to the Lakers? Is that just to guarantee he gets paid? I, you know, possibly facilitates a sign and trade. I have no idea. I can't yes. make heads or tails of, of any of this fiasco with the Brooklyn Nets. Like, it, it know, is a fiasco. Three my, years ago. My question is, why do they want to leave? Like, what happened so bad? Because I, I read somewhere that Kyrie and KD still would like to play together. Yeah. They just don't want to play in Brooklyn. So something happened in coach. Brooklyn. It's got to be coach or management. It's got to be Nash, right? Well, and the owner said, too, like, could be, you know, that he wants to put a product out on the floor that, like, he's proud of, and he wants to avoid what happened last year with, like, KD and Kyrie never playing together and Kyrie sitting out all these games and, you know, then having to trade James Harden. Like, like, 
think about that. That team had KD, Kyrie, and James Harden all on the same team, Couldn't and they played the like no games with each other, and then they're all now gonna, about to be. James Harden's been traded. KD and Kyrie about to be traded. They have nothing to show for it. But that this continues to go back into what we talked about last last time with the Warriors, how they built their team through the draft. Bro, you got to build the shit through the fucking draft. You do. You cannot sign all these start. You cannot. Bro, it's like the Yankees in baseball, and they never fucking win because they just buy their teams. Like, you have to build it through the draft. Yes, can you go out and sign a big person to, like, fill a piece? 100%. Mm-hmm. You can't go be the Brooklyn Nets and then go get KD, Kyrie, James Harden, LaMarcus Aldridge, all these, like, guys who were, like, max contract players. Right. And then put them together and be like, go get them. Like, it just, it never works. You want to know what it, it is? Works. It's ego. Like, you get, sure. some young, you get some young sure. good guys. Like, that's what I like about Detroit. We're building, and they're building people that, like, the city is proud of. Like, these guys know what Detroit's about, sure. and they want to grind. Whereas, like, you look in Brooklyn, bro, those are all, dude, it's a bunch of ego guys. It's a bunch yeah. of me, me, me guys instead of team guys. And there's a real reason why, you know, Kyrie can't win with LeBron. There's a reason why KD can't win with Steph and the fucking Golden Boys. And there's a reason why Harden has never won. Well, KD did win with Steph. What I'm saying about? he needed them. He like, needed he KD and Steph. Them, yeah. Like, bro, like, what did yeah. he do? I mean, he still had Russell Westbrook and James Harden in OKC. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's they not like young. he played He's with... Young version doesn't matter. They, I would argue that they were better at that time because they had a lot less ego. And together, those three were like, fuck, we could do it together. Yeah, and sure. then now, to look at them. And when you, if you put those three back together, they'd be like, there's not enough balls on the court for them. So that's, yeah. where I, that's what I say. Yeah. It's yeah, ego. For sure. I mean... It's just uh, crazy, like, too, that, like, that. NBA is such a player-first driven league. Like, one day, your star can wake up and just be like, I don't want to be here anymore. For sure. And you have to, like, trade them. For sure. And, like, they're saying that they wouldn't, like, do wrong by Kevin Durant. Like, they're going to listen to his preferred list of teams and try and, like, work out a deal that, like, he approves of. And it's just so different from the NFL or the NHL where a player can walk into a GM's office and be like, I want to be traded, and they can just be like, no, that's you'll cool. never play football again. Yeah, like, you either play for us or you don't play. Yeah, 100%. And then, in other news, Donovan Mitchell wants to force his way to Miami, which is a dream spot for him. <clears throat> yeah, which, the, bro, the Jazz just that traded would... Rudy Gobert to the Timberwolves. I mean, there's no sense for Donovan Mitchell to stick around for that. So... I don't know. Who knows? I want to also it's want to get this uh, want to get this theory going. Want to get it thrown out there. Oh, I love theories. Here the we go. East was too much for KD. The East was too much. He's running away from the East. Okay. Why a lot was it of, too much? A lot of people say it's that the East is the, the weaker West. conference. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people say the East is the weaker conference. That's easier than the West. Well, KD KD was out. KD never won the East, and he's out. His Joel Embiid was too much to handle. I mean, you could say you could say Giannis and Joel Embiid. I mean, that's a hot take. I mean, that's a hot take. That's a hot sure. take. Because in the West, you obviously have Warriors, Suns, LeBron. Mavs. Matt. Like, it's – the West is loaded. And who said something that KD and Kyrie might go to the Lakers? Was that you? Yeah. Is that, like, is that you? I mean, I've seen it too. Like That some, was the article. The article literally said that they were trying to get him. And I did see that they well, were – That would be – Fuck, I, I, so, I saw what that. I saw what so they sad. were giving up. It was like, I mean, there it's just gonna be those three versus the other team. So, like, so, it's gonna be no one else. Would <laughs> you would still win, win but like, it's just, get, that's though, it. Is how could the Lakers ever go from a position of not being able to trade for really any star with their pack? You know, that package that always keeps getting floated around about a first round pick and tailing Horton Tucker and blah. How could they go from a team that like? can't trade for any star to all of a sudden being able to swing KD and Kyrie. Well, you, like, have, you have some di- disgruntled players. That's how. And, and for Brooklyn, you would get Kyrie and KD's contract off the books. But which, who would they get back? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the no, Lakers don't never, have assets repl- to give. Listen, you can't, that's the thing, too. You is can't like, replace Kyrie and KD. Like, you're going to, you're, you lose that trade. The only thing you win is you win cap space. KD is it's one of the win. most valuable, is the most valuable trade asset to ever hit the U.S. sports market. Like, open, open market. There is no return Bro, comparable. Bro, plot twist, Lakers trade LeBron to Brooklyn. They just platoon swap. 
LeBron would he say no. LeBron would say no because the Nets have no picks over the next like five years, and he wants to play with Brownie. So he'd be like, "No, I can't. Oh, I can't right. go to the Nets." Dude, the Pistons need to. I do know another they team that's Brownie. young and has a ton of draft picks, and then, you know needs a needs a leader. Who? The Oklahoma City Thunder. LeBron to OKC. <laughs> LeBron says, I'm going to do it with my son and Chet and, and Shea and Josh Giddy and OKC. Dude, if I am the – dude, I've said this a million times. I don't care how washed up LeBron is. And first of all, Bronny's going to be in the NBA in two years. He's already reclassified. He's playing in the G League next year, which is going to be a – it's going to be a big step. He's a senior in high school playing in the I'm G League. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, we talked about Monty step. Bates doing this. I think, and I did the same thing because I left, and I'm not going to try to compare myself to Bronny because I didn't play in the G League. I'm just saying I left early to play, you know, junior hockey, and that was like the worst mistake I ever did. There's something in your head when you're a kid yeah. that you're like, I just want to get there. Right. And sometimes the fastest way isn't the fastest way. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you smooth is fast, and For sometimes sure. just being. Like, do your senior year of high school. Go play one year of college. Like, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Go have that experience because once you get to the show, it is so much different. Like, playing a college sport to professional sport, drastically different. As a kid, bro, you grow up dreaming to play professional sports. Mm -hmm. And then you get there and you're like, ah, it's not what I thought it was. And it's not. As Rod Wave says, finally caught up to my dream and I didn't want to see him. I mean, that's that's a big fact. I I felt that way in baseball after I got drafted. That shit, like, in your head, it's... It's something bigger, and you know we talk about this a lot. Like you build shit in your head, and what we were talking about that earlier is when you can voice something, right? Yep. You control, you control it. You have the power over it. When you keep it suppressed, it overtakes you. And you know, obviously, when you you you're, you everybody wants to reach the destination. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to reach yeah. the destination in their head. But I was. But you have to fall in love with the process, and I think, and I hate, and and and, and I'm actually all for Bronny. Going to the G League because I selfishly, as a fan, want to see him and LeBron play together as fast as possible. I would love to possible. see that. You know, maybe That's Knicks, selfish. You know. Selfish. If I was LeBron, I'd be like, no, you're going to play your senior year. You're going to go to college. And if you're good enough to leave after a year, you can leave after a year. I just think going from a junior in high school, you can play the highest level AAU basketball in the world mm-hmm. if you want. Going from there to the G League, which is rank it in professional leagues. I don't care where you rank it. You are going to be playing grown men. Yeah. You are playing grown men who have been at playing basketball as their job every single day for years and years. Have played college. Have went through what you have played been overseas. Through. You know, so done it. It's it, it's gonna it's gonna be some adversity for him. And I don't. And I'm assuming Le, obviously LeBron is smart and knows what the fuck he's doing. Well, you, so hopefully, we talk about, hopefully Bronny goes and kills it. And, you know, obviously we see him in the NBA in two years, but we'll see. We talk about someone like that and Amani Bates. You know, Amani Bates just uh, Shout out Eastern, announced baby. his uh, transferring to Eastern Michigan. And, school. you know, I read this article earlier this week, and it was just basically talking about the rise and fall of Amani Bates, how this kid went from being 15 years old and being on the cover of Sports Illustrated compared to KD to – kind of, you know, making all these wrong moves, getting yanked out of high school and getting a prep school built around him, you know, reclassifying, going to college a year early, going to Memphis where, you know, supposedly his dad was like a nightmare making scenes and like being a a thorn in, in Penny Hardaway's side. And now, you know, he's coming home and going to Eastern where arguably it's going to be like, almost high school all over again for him, playing inferior competition, having for everything sure. be about him instead of, you know, possibly developing him for the next uh, level. And, you know, I, I really hope Amani puts it together. For sure. I think that if he can really ball out, lead them to maybe a MAC tournament title, a possible first or last four in, you know, play yeah. in game, that that could really help him out. But I could also see it going uh, – very south, very quick. Listen, I think the worst mistake he ever did was not going to Michigan State out of high school, going to play for Tom Izzo, going into a system where you, where you are going to sacrifice. You're going to learn. You can be the best player, but if you're not going to listen to Tom Izzo, you're not going to play. I think he needed that discipline. He went to Memphis where they definitely gave him a leash, mm-hmm. which is what Penny Hardaway is selling there for recruiting. Right. Obviously, there's some endorsements there because people are getting big money and they're getting big recruits. But... As an Eastern fan, Eastern alum, 
as just a fan of Amani Bates being a local kid, I do like the move back to Eastern. Yeah. I think it's smart. It's, it's great for the it, community. It, for sure. It's good. It's great for the school. I mean, I'm interested in getting season tickets. I'm interested in going and seeing I mean, Amani Bates get some play sales. as much basketball as I can. Like For sure. You I know, mean, who I, knows? That you know, on, on the flip side, that could be a, a greatest that never was. And, and we could be sitting here talking in 20, 25 sure. years about how we got to see discount Amani Bates games, you know, and he's throwing down in the convocation center, but, you know, just never makes it to the league. But we got to see that. I, I, I saw him play in high school at the combo. I saw him, he dropped like 30. They actually lost the game. He shot like 20% from the free throw line, which is why they lost. Shot a ton of free throws. But, hey. We're going to wrap it up. We're keeping it short and sweet. Want to keep it interactive. Final thoughts from the, from the chef over there? You got anything? No, I'm, uh, I'm good. I, I like that one. That was good. That was you got good. any final thoughts? Um, you know, just tell us what you want to see in the comments. and For real. You know, let hey, us man. know what we're, doing, what we're doing right. More importantly, what we're doing wrong. Give yeah, me those criticisms. Facts. Hey, listen, we want this to be interactive. So if you've got something we want to talk about, obviously – We'd like to keep it in the wheelhouse of our knowledge, but if there's something specific, drop it below. But appreciate you tuning in. Real O Show podcast, episode three of 3 million. We'll see where we get to, but peace out. Thank you for listening.